Well, a good afternoon to you. This is the Central Florida Computer Society and the Windows Special Interest Group, or the WinSIG, for Sunday, March 9th, 2020. I'm sitting in my uh, home in Bradenton, Florida, and we are presenting to the Central Florida Computer Society in Castleberry slash Fern Park uh, this afternoon, as we do every month on the second Sunday of the month. And we're also joined by several people from around the country. And, and Yui, we welcome you. Yui? Yes, sir. Did your change in the daylight saving time also affect the calendar? Because it's March 8 over here. And oh, you're, okay. You just said March 9, and that's what you have on the screen. I, well, that's what I read it from the screen. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm a day ahead. Uh, I, not only did I move it an hour ahead, I turned it a day ahead. I'll change that, but... Uh, Thank you for letting me know. And uh, I've got a lot of items to cover today. And now you've thrown me off my track, but that's all right. Uh, let's minimize this. And we'll bring up my notes. Uh, and the first item is the four free tools to check the internet. And. Uh, Let's see, I did a search and it picked up that, but that's okay. So I'm going to move this for here. Four free tools to check your internet speed. Uh, this is from Kim Commando. Some of you may have heard about her, but uh, more than anything uh, in this article, what I did want to cover is an outline of what speeds you have to aim for for your best needs. One to three megabits, good enough for web surfing, email, social, casual, online. And that's what you probably get if you go to McDonald's or if you go to uh, uh, some other place where it has free Wi-Fi. Pretty much now the minimum that you're going to get uh, through your service provider is 10 megabits. Uh, sometimes it's even more than that. Three to four megabits, the slowest possible speed you need for standard video streaming from something like Netflix. Five to 10 megabits, <clears throat> and Netflix recommends at least five for a single HD stream, and you'll double that for two simultaneous streams. So if you're running it on two different TVs, you wanna have uh, between five and 10. Uh, 10 to 20 is the lowest speed you should aim for if you want consistent, reliable internet experience, 20 megabits and beyond. Now we're talking households businesses with multiple computers and gadgets. Of course, the more gadgets you have, the more things you've got going on. If you're running a, uh, uh, some kind of a personal assistant like the uh, 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 Amazon Echo or the uh, 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 um, Google home and, and, and some of the other ones that are out there, uh, and then you're running some uh, plugs and you're running some lights and you're running a, a ring or one of the doorbells and so on, uh, those are all taking up uh, bandwidth and you want to have more and more. Uh, I'm doing 150 and I'm finding sometimes I'm, I'm, I've got some slowdowns, but I don't think it's because of, of having such. I think it's that the uh, uh, the actual internet is somewhat, uh, it has its ups and downs. So here are some free tools. Uh, is the Ookla speed test. Uh, I, I have that on my iPhone and my Samsung phone. Uh, it, it, I have a, an app for it, but you can run it as well on your desktop. Uh, so the Ookla is one. Uh, Netflix has one called Fast. Fast.com is another. And then you can search for uh, free internet speed uh, from Google. And, and what you do is you just go to Google and then just say, uh, search for speed test. It will come up and bring up a box like this. You click up run speed test. Come on, run it. And let's see what I'm running right now. And don't forget, we are in the process of, oh, it's terrible. 
I pay for 150. Oh. And I'm running it here, and it's coming up at 6.2 uh, download. I think it was a bit higher up a little. When we were here for the board meeting, I thought it was about 25 or 30. Yeah, and, and you were just, uh, your voice was just jittery. So I don't know if that's from your end or my end. Uh, but let's do that speed test just one more time. That's a little bit better. But it still should be, it should be up, it should be 100 or more. Because yeah, I'm wired on top of it. And you, you see that it varies. Uh, wow. We just did it a, a minute ago, and it was, what, 40-something, and uh, now it's 56 down. Don't forget that down is what you're receiving. Upload is what you're sending. And since we're doing uh, audio back and forth, and, vi and, and I'm doing video to you, you're downloading my video, but I'm uploading it. So, uh, so those... That's what I usually, I usually just go to Google, type in speed test, find this, and that's it. I do have some, as I say, I have some apps. These are some ways that you should check your speed occasionally, especially if you're having a problem. Double check and see if, uh, uh, if it's coming from your end. If you can't get to a website, uh, there is a website. Let's see if I can find it quickly here. Uh, it's called... I can find it. Um, just me. And it says down for everyone or just me. So if you ever go to a website and you're having a problem, just type in the name of the website and it will let you know whether it's down or it's just you. And that's a good website down for everyone or just me.com. I don't have that in my notes, so you might want to jot that one down. Oops, I don't want to close this whole thing out or it might cut us off. Okay, so that's that article. Now, the next item on my list is how to listen to audiobooks and where to get them. Well, let's look at that article, and what I ended up doing is, is I ended up putting together a mini presentation that I'm going to run and I'm going to talk to you about here in just a moment. But let's find the original article. Come on. Uh, right here and bring it up. How to listen to audiobooks and where to get them, a beginner's guide. Don't forget all of these links are on the Huey.net website for today's date under the Windows SIG. So in this article, the publisher is adapting uh, nonfiction and graphic novels by using audio soundscapes to fill in what might be the lost, might be lost with no visuals. Uh, how do audiobooks work? After Thomas Edison created the first spoken word phonograph record in 1877, not 19, 1877, he predicted technology might one day allow books to be listened to with great profit and amusement by the lady or gentleman whose eyes and hands may be otherwise employed. The advantages of such books over those printed are too easily seen, too readily seen, to mention, he wrote in the North American View, such books would be listened to where now none are read. Uh, Deloitte predicts that the global audiobook market will grow to 3.5 billion in 2020, a 25% increase. Uh, talking books first uh, emerged in 1932. 1952, Cadman Records became the first company dedicated to selling spoken word records to the public. Their first release, a collection of poems by Dylan Thomas, was narrated by the author. 2008, the Library of Congress credited that recording with launching the audiobook industry in the United States. Now, how to listen to audiobooks versus a printed book or an ebook? The evolution of the spoken word mirrors innovations in the music industry. Books on tape replaced vinyl audiobooks. Streaming superseded compact discs, and smartphones are replacing all else. As the audiobook industry flourishes, so is the number of ways you can listen to audiobooks. Academics have studied the differences in comprehension between reading a book or listening to one. Uh, one study uh, concluded that for the average reader, 
the two elicited a comparable comprehension and retention of text. Uh, but why posture audiobooks as a replacement for printed texts in the first place? Often audio is not competing with time spent with books, but with people listening while driving during exercise or, or when reading a physical book is impossible. Are audiobooks for you? And uh, the article goes on. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But where do you get them? I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about Audible, and I'm going to talk about Scribble, and I'm going to talk about some other things. So let's go ahead and look at my mini uh, presentation here. And for those of you out of town, uh, well, I'll explain some things as we go along, but uh, uh, I'm going to probably add some things to this and make it a full presentation. But uh, let's uh, – there we go. Okay. Since the main audience – or I shouldn't say the main audience, but the audience that I am sending this to is sitting in Seminole County – at the uh, usually you're at the library, but now you're at the American Legion. But uh, the Seminole County Library System is a good place to get audiobooks. Uh, according to them, uh, your Seminole County Public Library provi card provides you access to free digital content, including ebooks, but also audiobooks and magazines, music, and videos. Now, if in Seminole County, your Seminole County Public Library card gives you the access to these audiobooks, the services are, that are available through your library, and it's free with your card, is Overdrive, Hoopla, and something called Tumble Book Library. Overdrive allows you uh, uh, five books per card at a time, and you can, that can be either ebooks or audiobooks. Uh, Hoopla has four per card, uh, and you can check them out for seven, 14, or 21 days with Hoopla 21 days, and there's no limit to the TumbleBook library. In order to use them, there are some instructions that you can click on. This is from their website. You can click on those, and it'll give you instructions on how to do it. Uh, the Libby app you can get for iOS or Android, and the classic OverDrive app you can get for iOS, Android, or Kindle for the overdrive, and you, uh, Hoopla has iOS, Android, and Kindle, so you can pretty much on your phone or on your Kindle, and TumbleBook is just iOS and Android. Now here's some examples of some audio books from the Seminole County system. You'll notice as you look through the titles, you can see whether it's an audio book or an e-book or if it's something else, and there are literally hundreds, if not more, uh, uh, titles available. And here are some more that are available. These are audio books, and this is from a featured page. You can go by, you can look them up by category, by recommended, by popular, and so on. So you have access to all of these audio books for free from the Seminole County Library System. Now, what if you live in Orange County, which is Orla for those from out of town that are online, Orange County is Orlando, and that's just south of Seminole County. You'll notice here they have, for, for the audiobooks, they have Hoopla, the same one. They have Overdrive, the same one. But they have something called RBD, uh, RB Digital as well. And here are some examples of what the page looks like and some of the books that you can get uh, for uh, for free, again, using your Orange County Library card. And they have it broken into categories, as probably most of the libraries do. But you can see nonfiction, fiction, literature, thriller, politics. Whatever you're into, there's audiobooks available. And again, they also mentioned uh, for Orange County something called RB Digital, e-audio 
formerly one click digital and here's some just some information about it. it's just another service and again if you have a, a library card from orange county you have access to that system just by putting in your card number and a special pin that you have set up with your library card online now i'm in manatee county here in florida now manatee county you'll look for what they've got you've got to go into their database user uh, database area, and you've got uh, uh, for audiobooks, you've got Hoopla, you've got Overdrive again, and you've got the RB, uh, RB Digital, just like Orange County. So the same services are available from library to library, but some have some, some di different ones as well. So again, check your local library and see what they have. Now, Sarasota, which is the next county south of us here, and that's where uh, obviously the city of Sarasota is in, their system, what you do there is you go to what's called the digital library, and when you do, you'll see that they have a uh, cloud library in addition to Hoopla and to the OverDrive. And again, they have tutorials that you can go to, click on it, and it'll tell you how to download, how to use them, how to sign, sign in, sign out. So for those of you who are out of town, uh, check your local library system and see what they offer. Almost all the libraries now are offering this. There are certain, some digital stuff that they don't have, but the, most of them now are doing uh, uh, audio books. And we're going to talk, we're going to listen to what some of them sound like in just a few minutes. Or just a, yeah. Now, if, if you don't want to use your library system, or if uh, there are some benefits to using some of the paid services that are out there, one of them is Audible. And they have 30 days of uh, membership free that you can try. Uh, you, you, during that time period, you can get one audio book and two aud uh, Audible originals just to get you started. After, tri uh, after the trial, you get three titles each month, one audio book and two audio Audible originals of your choice. Uh, you can exchange them. If you don't like an audiobook, you can swap it for free anytime. You can cancel anytime. Your audiobooks are free to keep, or not free, but they're yours to keep forever in Audible. And, and the reason I mention that, you'll see that when I talk about the, the other paid service that's out there. But Audible runs $14.95 a month after 30 days. You can cancel at any time, and there's some there's some different subscriptions available and some limits to what you get for one and how many books and so on. Now, another service that's out there is, uh, let's say, wait a minute, let's talk about Audible one more second here. Uh, Audible is strictly audiobooks. Yes, they have over 100,000 audiobooks. Audible is similar to Netflix Originals, uh, offers... Uh, uh, original content exclusive only to them. And since Audible is owned by Amazon, you can listen to your audiobooks through your, uh, uh, through Alexa, and you can also listen to audi uh, Audible books in a dozen different languages. You can even choose from abridged and unabridged versions. Audible compatible devices, all iOS devices, all Android devices, Windows phones, Kindles, uh, SanDisk and Creative MP3 players, Victor Reader System, Braille Note and Apex Braille Note, Garmin and TomTom GPS devices, and Mac and Windows computers. So there's uh, ways of listening on all of those devices. Now, another uh, audiobook supplier or uh, a deliverer is called Scribed, and they're $9.99 per month after 30 days. They have a 30-day trial as well. They have unlimited audiobooks. If you remember, there's uh, with Audible, there's you can only get, I think it's one book and, and two originals. With this, it's unlimited, and you can cancel at any time. Now, Scribed offers audiobooks and more. They have ebooks, magazines, and research papers and sheet music. Now, those aren't well; those, those aren't uh, audible, but those are things that are with part of your subscription. So you're not going to get magazines read to you. you you're still going to have to look at them online. Uh, 
With a premium membership from Scribe, you can enjoy thousands of different audiobooks in different genres. You can also access short stories, essays, articles, and documents. Uh, Scribe also offers some original content that you can only listen to with a Scribe membership. Scribe compatible devices, Apple devices, iOS 9 or newer. This includes Apple Watches. Now that's iOS 9, not an iPhone 9. So that's the operating system. So uh, a lot of your older uh, iPhones are using 9 or uh, 10, I believe is the latest version. Android systems that are Android 4.4 or higher. And then Kindle devices with Fire OS 4 or higher. This does not include the Paperwhite. Now, Scribed versus Audible content. Audible and Scribe both offer an extensive library to their listeners, but Audible is the clear winner here because it offers basically every book for a price. If you are determined to listen to a specific book that just hit the shelves, Audible is probably right for you. If you're looking for more than audiobooks like magazines and research papers, then Scribe is right for you. Uh, download ownership. Uh, Audible is better if you want to keep your library forever. Scribe works more like Netflix. Once you cancel your subscription, you can no longer access the content. Compatibility, both services work on most smartphones, which is what most people will use. Uh, if we had to pick a winner, it would be Audible. This is from the author of, of where I got this information from, but we doubt that's a major factor to most users. Most people are gonna listen to them uh, using their phones, uh, their smartphones, so they shouldn't have a problem with uh, compatibility. Price, if price is the major factor, Scribd is definitely cheaper. Like most services these days, both Scribd and Audible offers free trials for newcomers to test out their products. Now, uh, I wanted to, to give you some examples of what an audiobook sounds like, because to be honest with you, I never heard one. I never listened to one. And so I went looking and I, I was concerned about copyright, especially the fact that we record this. And so I went to YouTube and I found this uh, uh, recording that's more of a, an advertisement to try to get people to read uh, books, uh, and to be hired as readers by this guy. But he, he's showing uh, several examples of some of the uh, people who read the books and what that sounds like. So I thought it was a good video to play. So uh, take a listen. It's not really anything to watch. It's mostly the sound. Hi, this is Pat Fraley. As I visit different regions around the country this year, teaching audiobook skills and guiding talent into making audiobook narration book deals and making demos, I thought it might be of value for you to listen to some examples of wonderful narrators and get a sense of how their personal styles vary. It should be an encouragement to you to hear the varied styles which are needed for audiobook narration. So, here goes. Here's the superstar of audiobook narrators, Scott Brick, reading an excerpt from What Makes Sammy Run by Bud Schulberg. There's nothing particularly unusual about Scott's voice. It's all about connecting with the listener and his storytelling abilities at unwinding that story. Also, Scott has the ability to give you the style of the piece. Notice how he takes on the feel of a 1930s or 1940s movie that's perfect for the book. The first time I saw him, he couldn't have been much more than 16 years old. A little ferret of a kid, sharp and quick. Sammy Glick. He used to run copy for me. Always ran. Always looked thirsty. Good morning, Mr. Mannheim, he said to me the first time we met. I'm the new office boy, but I ain't going to be an office boy long. Don't say ain't, I said, or you'll be an office boy forever. Thanks, Mr. Mannheim, he said. That's why I took this job, so I can be around writers and learn all about grammar and how to act right. Nine out of ten times I wouldn't have even looked up, but there was something about the kid's voice that got me. He must have been charged with a couple of thousand volts. So, you're a pretty smart little feller, I said. Oh, I keep my ears and eyes open, he said. You don't do a bad job with your mouth, either, I said. I wondered if newspaper men always wisecrack the way they do in the movies, he said. Get the hell out of here, I answered. He raced out, too quickly, a little ferret. 
Smart kid, I thought. Smart little yid. He made me uneasy. That sharp, neat, eager little face. I watched the thin, wiry body dart around the corner in high gear. It made me uncomfortable. I guess I've always been afraid of people who can be agile without grace. Now listen to Renee Rodman as she perfectly balances reading with embodying the characters with a reality in this excerpt from the young adult book, Wesley, The Story of a Remarkable Owl by Stacey O'Brien. I was a little nervous about asking if I could bring an owl home to live with us, but she just smiled and patted her horse on the neck. A barn owl? Won't he be a great addition to the family? Wendy, I said, I'll have to keep dead mice in the freezer and cut up mice in the fridge. Would that be okay? Meat is meat, she shrugged. I mean, a lot of mice, Wendy. A lot of mice? How many is a lot? Well, probably thousands of mice as time goes by. How long do barn owls live, anyway? She asked. Mm, I'm not sure how long they live in captivity. Maybe up to 15 or 20 years. Well, I think you should do it, she said. It's the chance of a lifetime. Here's an excerpt by Carrington McDuffie from Abiding Darkness by John Aubrey Anderson, where we hear her wonderful skill at doing some strong character work. Boy... He never called Mose anything else. There ain't never gonna be no drink better than coffee. Except in heaven, I reckon. The frail old man nodded and spoke as he bent to put the cup by the rocking chair. Except in heaven is right, boy. Gonna drink from the fountain that don't never run dry. A show enough pure river of living water. Clear as crystal, proceeding straight out of the throne. Now that's a drink to shame the best cup of coffee on the place. Now, here's a sample from Kata Mazur, narrating from the Nanny Diaries. Kata is a stellar reader, but by her own admission, has a kind of vanilla voice. One of her greatest skills, and one that is sought after by producers and publishers, is her ability to connect to the listener by giving the impression she's reading to one person. If there were any justice in the world, this is the point when all nannies should be given roadblocks and a stun gun. These rooms are destined to become the burden of my existence. From this point on, 95% of this apartment will be nothing more than a blurred background for chasing, enticing, and point-blank pleading with the child to put the Delft milkmaid down. I am also about to become intimate with more types of cleaning fluid than I knew there were types of dirt. It will be in her pantry, stocked high above the washer-dryer, that I discover people actually import toilet bowl cleanser from Europe. We arrive in the kitchen. It is enormous. With a few partitions, it could easily house a family of four. She stops to rest one manicured hand on the counter, affecting a familiar pose, like a captain at the helm about to address the crew. However, I know if I asked her where she keeps the flour... A half hour of rummaging through unused baking utensils would ensue. Here's my friend and wonderful actor, Richard McGonigal, who is fully capable of doing character voice work, but in this excerpt from Roosevelt and Churchill, Men of Secrets by David Stafford, Richard keeps to a rather dry read, almost reporting, which I think is perfect for the book. Franklin Roosevelt learned of Hitler's attack on Western Europe late on the evening of 9 May 1940 in a telephone call from his ambassador in Belgium. Ensconced in his favorite red leather armchair in the second floor study of the White House, surrounded by his collection of maritime pictures and models of ships, he listened grimly to the news of simultaneous attacks by more than a hundred German divisions on Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, and France. Ninety minutes later, the first reports began to filter in of bombs falling on Brussels, Amsterdam, and Rotterdam, and he stayed up until the early hours to digest them. Here's Hilary Huber reading from Going to Bend. She has that skill of giving the listener the impression she's reading right to them. Also, Hilary is wonderful at making bold character choices. While Petey diced 50 carrots, Rose read aloud from the weekly newspaper about old Billy Wall, who had just been indicted on sodomy charges. You know what I think? 
I think if he did what those kids say he did, the guy deserved to have a bad thing happen to him. I mean worse than shame and a jail term. I mean something bad. They should take him just like you'd take a carrot and peel him down real slow. You know, real careful. Layer by layer, until you've got him peeled naked as an egg. And then you bring him to Hubbard Elementary and you lock him in the gym with 20 mothers with baseball bats. You put some Gatorade in there and some high-nutrition snacks and maybe have an alternate or two who can substitute when one of the women gets tired. She traded Rose the peeler for a paring knife. The son of a bitch. Now here's an excerpt from Better Than I Know Myself by Virginia DuBarry and Donna Grant. It's read by one of our favorite readers, Lisa Renee Pitts. We hire her for all the books we have produced written by African-American authors. Listen to how Lisa Renee reads as if she becomes each character, including the author's narrator. I wish they all go to hell. Carmen felt the throbbing bass of her brother's stereo vibrate the steel fire door as she shoved her key in the last of four locks. How you gonna throw that car down? She knew Z and some of the fools he hung with were in there, playing pinochle or dirty hearts, eating greasy egg rolls and pork fried rice. Now here's Raven Kane reading from Jewel Plum Sykes' book, Bergdorf Blondes. Raven's voice and performance are just right for the material. The Upper East Side wife I met is called Muffy. Apparently it was once a very popular name in Connecticut, where most Muffies were born roughly in the middle of the last century. This Muffy, like all her neighborhood Muffies, says, Ralph Lauren is my drug of choice. She's also addicted to Botox injections. What book would benefit from your narration skills and style reading? What is your personal style? I'll be near you to help. If okay, that uh, uh, does it for that... Uh Recording, I think, it gives you a really good example of the different set, what the books sound like. I had never really been, uh, I've never really listened to an audio book, and I, it gave me an idea. You know, when you're driving, what a great way to listen to something other than the the junk that's on talk radio or on uh, uh, some of the music and so on. Just listen to a book. Uh, especially if you've got a long trip ahead of you. Uh, I listened to one, Huey, Alec Baldwin, doing an autobiography, and it was fascinating. He talked about growing up on Long Island, and I don't know why I didn't listen to more, because I enjoyed it quite a bit, too. Um, it, Bob has a comment. Sure. You know, when I used to drive from Michigan to Florida and back every Christmas and summer, um, I would always stop at um, Cracker Barrel, where they rent audio books. Um, you just you pay for it, and then at the next Cracker Barrel, after you possibly have listened to the whole book, whatever, um, you can trade it for another one or just bring it back. And, um, I can't remember what it costs, but. So I, 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 I'm only hearing part of it, and I'm not hearing it well. And just to make sure that other people who are online or who listen to the recording know, uh, what you're saying is you can get audiobooks at a Cracker Barrel uh, while you're on a trip and then stop at the next Cracker Barrel and turn it in and get another one? Or Correct. He's oh, saying it? correct. I did not know that. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know how many of the people who are online – uh, listen to audiobooks, but uh, the fact that you can go to the library and, and check them out and try them, what a, gr a great way to, to get some of the most popular books and a lot of the nonfiction books that are out there as well as fiction and so on. So, uh, and history books as well. I know, uh, Bob, you're into a lot of the history stuff and so on. I'm sure there's a lot of really good books uh, that you enjoy as well. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't done this lately, of course, but we're out of CD. I can hear that he's talking, but I can't hear what he's saying. So, he, Stan, if you would. Uh, he's mentioning that back when he was doing this driving, everything was on CDs from cars that had CD players. And uh, Tom Hirsch 
seems to think that they're probably doing it now with the USB uh, thumb drives. I guess you just borrow the thumb drive and turn it in the next place. That's interesting. Yeah, but also again, you can you can download them from download them to your phone and just listen through your phone. And most uh, in a lot of the cars now, you can run your phone through the speaker system of your car, and so you can get some good sound as well. All right, let's go to the next item. And I found this just last night, and I thought, uh, since this is Windows SIG, we'll get back to some Windows things. And what I did was I found, let's see, let's go to this. I found where you can get uh, Windows 10 All-in-One for Dummies third edition for free just by giving an email address. Now, before I go down and, and talk a little bit more about this and show you the book, you're giving them your email address. It is from uh, 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 from a group uh, that is part of uh, a Wiley now or has something to do with them, and that's the uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't, I'm trying to think of the, the, the group now. But anyway, when you do this, uh, you can get a copy of this just by giving your email address, but you're going to get a lot of email from them. So if you have a secondary email address that you use just for these kind of things, this is a good place to use it. Uh, but let's take a look at what, uh, let's see, this doesn't come out too good here. So let's go back to here and open it this way. Uh, what you have to do is it, it knows who it knew who I was because I've done this before and it's from the uh, uh, group make use of it, but it's their trade publication. So they're asking for a business address, but you give any email address you can when you click on it, it's just going to ask for an email address and it's going to send you an email uh, asking you to sign up for some of their other publications. You don't have to. And then when you click uh, OK, it's then going to send you an email with a link to the book, and you can download the book. Now, what's the book look like? Well, let's take a look. Um, here it is. It's a PDF file. It's in black and white. It's not the color version, so any of the, the screen captures and so on are in black and white. But let it come up. A couple of things I want to show you about it. Come on. Okay, this is it. I got the search on. That's why it's not showing too big. Let's make it a little Let's full screen it. And I think we can make it at... Uh, Uh, what page am I on here? I'm on page 23. You'll notice here, someone's at the top, it says I'm on page 41 of 960. So it is a full book with lots of information about Windows. And at the beginning, there is a nice table of contents and a list of all the chapters. Uh, it's Windows 10 all in one third edition. Uh, there is starting Windows 10. Uh, for newbies, for experienced, which version, and so on, as well as uh, building apps, uh, the built-in apps, working on the desktop, and so on. So there's lots of really good information. If you want a good book, you can get it free about Windows 10. It's just by going to the address. The link is on my website uh, at Huey.net. And... Uh, Let's see, there was one. Somebody's got a chat here. Um, okay, he said he downloaded something. So I guess it's this book. So that's good. Okay. So, oh, I do recommend that you uh, take a look at that as long as it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just an email address and some junk mail. Uh, and some of their mail is interesting, and sometimes they have some interesting... Uh, uh, magazines and so on, they offer for free as well. Uh, okay, let's go back 
to the next item. Okay, uh, let's talk about Windows 10 some more. And I had a couple of articles ready to talk about what's new in Windows 10 uh, that's coming. And then sure enough, Mike Ungerman this morning sends me another email with a different article. And I looked at it, it was better than all the ones that I had listed. So I added it to my list today. And let's make sure we get the right one. It's Windows 10 and here's what's new. So let's find the right article. It's probably at the top. Yep, this one right here. Now, what I did want to show you, uh, well, let's see if this is going to be a good example or not. It probably isn't because I cleaned it up already. But uh, I, I'll come back to this. But anyway, it's, it's MS Power User, uh, the article. So let's go to the article. It's a long article. But as an introduction to uh, some of the information in here, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. But we could be here for a couple hours uh, just talking about what's coming. But Windows 10 to 2004, that means it's 2020, the fourth month. It doesn't mean it's, they're, going to, they're taking us back to 2004. Uh, it is Windows 10. It's going to be the next version, and we're in the third month now, so the fourth month. So it's coming, and it's coming soon, and already uh, they're starting to be more. It looks like it's closer and closer to when they release the time, and we're ready for the next big update to Windows 10. And it's we're not sure what it's going to be called. It may be called version 2004, it may be called Spring 2020, uh, it may be called Spring 20, uh, who knows what Microsoft wants to come up with for the name, but here's, here are some of the things that's new, and I'm just going to look at the titles and then uh, and you can go back through the article and take a look at it. I added this also this morning to the list, so if you check the list the last uh, day or two when I first posted it, on uh, Huey.net in the WinSig area, uh, it, it wasn't included, but it is there as of today. First thing that they're talking about is Cortana. Cortana is in for a big change. They have uh, kind of separated the Cortana from the search, and they're, they're doing some other things. And so there's some some uh, information about Cortana, and that's going to be changing quite a bit. It's in a, a beta stage now for some of the changes, but. Uh, uh, they're making some differences in Cortana, which is similar to Siri and similar to Alexa and so on. Uh, but but it's, it's, it's the Windows uh, uh, personal assistant. Uh, and then they're doing some things with search as well, but they are separating the search and Cortana, and, and they're making them two different things. And the search is going to be a lot better. Uh, there's going to be quick searches, and now in Search Home, you're going to be able to do some things like weather and top news and news and history and new movies and so on. So it's getting to be uh, uh, what Cortana should be, and then Cortana is being something else. I don't. I I really am not sure why they have both. I guess it's because they can, and they like to confuse us. Uh, but you're going to start seeing some things in, in the search. But one of the big things is the way they're de, uh, designing the search results and also uh, the search engine itself and how it uh, uh, saves the information and creates an index. And I think there's some more on that down here. The Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, there's some... some uh, Improvements in that, for those of you who are interested in Windows, uh, in the Windows 10 uh, update, we'll have some things dealing with uh, uh, running Linux. Uh, Windows Hello Pin in the safe mode, so you're going to be able to uh, log into and do some things in the safe mode you couldn't do before. Uh, you can connect network cameras to Windows 10 devices. Windows now will allow users to associate network cameras to their PC, enabling photo capture and streaming of video in the camera applications. 
You're going to enable, uh, it's, it's going to enable automatic restart for UWP apps. And I don't think I'm using any of those. And I really haven't studied up much on them. That might be something for a future Windows uh, SIG to talk about a little bit about the UWP and the apps involved. Uh, the Xbox Game Bar updates, I don't use any of that. Uh, improving your Bluetooth pairing experience. Uh, but a lot of it's going to deal with the Microsoft uh, hardware and pairing with uh, the, the Microsoft Bluetooth equipment and pairing with uh, Windows. But I'm sure other devices will also uh, be involved with that as well. There's going to be an update on virtual desktop renaming. Uh, there's going to be introducing a new tablet experience if you've got a two-in-one convertible PC. Uh, the only two-in-one I have is a Chromebook, so that won't help me any. Uh, however, I do have a, a one of the early surfaces, but because it's so old, I don't know whether it will be up be updatable to some of the tablet experiences or not. I'll have to check that once it comes out. You can reset your PC from the cloud. You can control over. Uh, you can control over restarting apps at sign-in. You're going to have control over restarting, so you can actually restart apps when you sign in. Uh, and this solves some problems sometimes with programs that you use. The GPU temperature now is going to be part of Task Manager. So you'll be able to see here not only the utilization and memory, but it's also going to show you what the graphics processor uh, unit, uh, what the temperature is on your graphic processor card. Come on. I just lost it. Hang on a second. I'll do that again. There we go. And so we've got to now go back, let it load. With over 15,000 notes in my Evernote, sometimes it doesn't work as well as I would like it to. And I'm not sure what's going on. It's not loading up. I may have to get out and come back in, get out of Evernote and come back. Let's see if I can do that. No. It's stuck. Okay. Let's go ahead and. No, it's not letting me even get out of it this way. Close window. There we go. And then reopen it. Aren't computers fun? <laughs> and go to this area where I keep all of these. Find it again. Come on. Well, let's just stay in this mode then. We're almost done with this article anyway. Uh, let's see where we were. There's going to be some changes in the notification. There's going to be some changes. Oh, you can uh, add quick events from the taskbar. Uh, there's going to be some data information as well here. Redesign network status page. Oh, there's going to be a lot of new things in 
the Windows 10 update coming. There's going to be a feedback hub updates, uh, new download throttling for delivery optimization, some ink stuff, and disk type visible now in the task, task manager. So you're going to tell if it's an SSD card or not. Uh, update file explorer search, as I mentioned, and expanding dictation support for more languages, cross language uh, information, bringing swift keys typing intelligence to more languages. So, in other words, there's going to be a lot of items in the new update. Now, uh, there's some, I've got some more articles on the Windows 10 update, but they pretty much just go over or uh, mention the same information, but in a different way. So let's go to the Windows 7 information. Let's take this article first. As many of, of the CFCS members are well aware, let's get this article to come up. Come on. Well, try again. All right, that's not wanting to work now that it bombed it. I don't want to get out of it again. Okay, so we'll just click, whoops. Screen here. No, I clicked on the wrong article. Windows 7 users appear to be sticking to their guns and not leaving now out of support, uh, leaving the now out of support operating system, at least by going to the latest statistics from one analytics firm. It looks like the uh, Windows 7 previously experienced a decent drop in desktop operating system market share from December to January, falling from 29.57 to 25.56. Of course, January was the end of the life de deadline for Microsoft. However, uh, February's will certainly be a cause for concern as they barely change from January. In other words, those of you who have stuck to Windows 7 are sticking with 7. So uh, uh, what they're saying is Microsoft's chief financial uh, said the industry is, is slowing down. Uh, Windows 10, which comes pre-installed on many adoption, and the supply chain is further being disrupted by the uh, coronavirus, which is having a big impact in the tech world overall. Uh, so the operating system, people who are on 7 are staying there, and they're not uh, updating to Windows 10. And, uh, and that's true of, of a lot of the CFCS members I am, uh, I am aware of aware of that, although I haven't had uh, a computer with Windows 7 on it in several years. Don't forget Windows 10 has been out five years, over five years now. Uh, but the other article on here, is Windows 7 is dead. Let's find that article. Let's try this again and see if this works. <coughs> that feature is just not wanting to work. I'll full page this and make it larger. How to stay safe is possible if you're staying in Windows 7. And I know a lot of you uh, uh, in CFCS, as I said, are staying with it. So if you're sticking with Windows 7 uh, and, stay, and doing that is not an option. And that in some cases, it isn't an option. In some cases, you just don't want to go to 10. But don't use Internet Explorer, whatever you do. Uh, use something like Firefox uh, uh, or uh, I think Chrome now is also, uh, let's see, the other top browser vendors will continue to support Windows 7. However, uh, 
uh, Google's Chrome is popular, but Opera beat it out as is there. If, uh, this came from uh, one of the popular magazines. So they're saying Firefox or Opera is best, but if you're using Chrome, that's still a good choice. Don't use Internet Explorer. Uh, choose your software wisely. Uh, that segues to a key point. Make sure the software you're using still supports Windows 7 so that any potential security holes still get patched. Uh, after browser vulnerabilities, uh, uh, poisoned Office documents are another frequent attack vector. If you're still using Office 2007, stop. Its support ended years ago. Office 2010 will continue to receive security updates through October of this year. So you have a little time there. And Microsoft will actually continue to support Office 2010 for the next three years until January 2023. So if you, subs if you subscribe to Office 365. If that's not in your budget, check out uh, a list of free Microsoft Office uh, alternatives in this article. Java, Flash, and Adobe Reader are commonly targeted as well, so make sure they're up to date if you need them. You might not, though. Uh, uh, and so the article says, install an antivirus software if you're running Windows 7. Don't rely on Microsoft anymore because they're not updating theirs for Windows 7. Uh, this magazine article is suggesting Norton Security Premium. Just make sure that which, whatever antivirus software that you're installing does support Windows 7 and is being updated for Windows 7. Uh, let's see what else they say here. The best overall password manager. In other words, make sure you've got strong passwords. Windows 7 was great while it lasted. Now it's gone. Well, these tips will help you keep using the operating system for longer. Running an unsecured operating system in today's hyper-connected world is inviting trouble. Uh, if you're running Windows 7, Unplug it from the internet. If you need it for the internet, get a second computer. Or another thing they mentioned in this article is have a Windows 10 computer and run Windows 7 in, uh, as a virtual machine to run those programs that you need to run. Uh, I, I do know a couple of people who uh, can't update their Windows to Windows 10 because they're running software that will not run under Windows 10. It will only run under Windows 7. So if you're in one of those positions, you might want to run that software in a virtual machine under Windows 7 on a machine that runs Windows 10. Any comments or questions? I have one, Huey. Sure. Uh, is there, there's an emulator in Windows 7. Uh, for running other other software that wouldn't run under Windows 7, so I could back up to Windows 5. Is there an emulator in Windows 10? I've never looked. I don't know. Okay, that's a good one to look for. Because if you have Windows 7 software that won't run under 10, sometimes you can back the processor up back. Like there is a combat compatibility mode. There is the virtual. You can set up a virtual ma machine fairly easily. And as I recall, there's a virtual machine, and I think Windows 7 is available, and you can run it without doing a lot of work to make it happen in uh, uh, in, in Windows 10. Any other questions? I don't see anything online. So let's go to my next item. Uh, how are we doing in time? We're, I'm just going to start this article. There are some articles I'm not going to get to. Uh, but And so please check them out on your own. But the next article is this article. And you, yes. you can go yeah. till quarter of three. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get out of this completely and come back in again. When I say completely, not out of what we're doing, but just out of here. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to go to Task Manager and make sure all of Evernote is closed. Let 
Looks like it is. Now there's some things here. The clipper is here, okay. We should be all right. Oh, let me try that again. And then let me, you know, it came right back to the same spot. So apparently it didn't restart. Well, let's try this. No, that's not working. Okay, well, we'll just do it the way we just did. Uh, I know many of you use Amazon, so I thought this was a good article. Whoops, probably shouldn't have done it this way. So let's. Uh, do one more thing here and let's just open this and do this and now make it bigger. 20 ways to get more out of your Amazon account. If you're running Amazon, number one, you can get photo confirmation of your Amazon deliveries. For some reason or other, I'm not, they're not doing that for me anymore and I'm not sure if that's something you can turn on or off. And they may not be doing it anymore. I don't know, but I do track my packages and I know if something's been delivered. Uh, price match in store with the Amazon app. If you have the Amazon app on your phone and you're in any store, uh, what you can do is open up the Amazon app and by tapping the camera icon in the upper right corner next to the search bar, you select the barcode in the bottom, click it, and it will show you what that same product is at Amazon. And then companies like Target and Walmart will price match, meaning you can score that cheap Amazon price at a brick and mortar store. Not sure how you go about doing it. You probably have to go to their service desk and show them uh, once you pick up the article and they should match it for you. Uh, now, many times the Amazon price is higher because uh, they're shipping it to you for free. And so sometimes that doesn't work, but sometimes if you've got a good price on Amazon, you might be able to get it locally and not have to wait for it to come through the mail. You know, uh, just something uh, that I wasn't aware that you could do. If you're a Prime member, and if you have, uh, if you have uh, an Echo and use it, you, ha you have a Prime membership. You can free up some space uh, on your phone by having an Amazon photo storage. I happen to use the Google Photos, but you can also store things out on Amazon. And it looks like for Amazon, it doesn't say that they reduce the quality like they do on, on Google. So maybe the original photos can be kept on your Amazon account, then upload them to your uh, Google account and it'll be a little bit less quality, but you'll have the original still out on Amazon. Uh, Prime members can now save money or get rewards. You can have a no rush shipping. So if you're a Prime member because you've got an Echo, but you really don't care whether the package comes tomorrow when you order something, you can say no rush shipping and a lot of times that well, they'll give you a discount or it'll be the, a lower price for the product. Uh, there's a try before you buy with Prime Wardrobe. I'm not familiar with that. I would probably do that, uh, but uh, some people do. You can calculate your spending history by going to your accounts and lists and take a look at your orders uh, and go back and look to see everything that you ordered by year. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> how much you buy from them if you are a regular customer. You can get free digital copies of physical albums when you see the Auto Rip logo. So if you buy music from Amazon, you can also uh, get digital copies of that music as well. Uh, Prime members save at Whole Foods because uh, I'm sure most of you know that Whole Foods is now owned by Amazon and uh, although their prices there are generally higher than other places, sometimes they have some pretty good deals uh, for Prime members and certain items uh, qualify for at least a 10% discount. So to get your down, uh, discount, download the Whole Foods Market app or link your phone number to your Amazon account. Then just scan the code 
on the, uh, on the app or give your phone number at checkout. So just by giving your phone number at the checkout, if you've uh, uh, have uh, linked it with your Amazon account, you'll get your discount. Uh, shop and donate to charity. I know Mike has used this. I know I've used it. Uh, Amazon has a sister website that offers uh, all the same products, but with a twist. It donates proceeds from your order to the charity of your choice. It's called Amazon Smile. You just set it up and you, you type in smile.amazon.com when you start shopping. And so a small percentage uh, will go to that charity of whatever you purchase. So if you're a big purchaser and you have a favorite charity, this is a great way to contribute. Uh, Ron says Amazon doesn't upload videos. Oh, uh, with the uh, the photos section, if you're saving uh, photos to the Amazon uh, site uh, with your Prime account, they don't take videos. Okay. And uh, he says that uh, his local orchestra gets uh, Amazon Smile, uh, and I know. Uh, I've got it set up for our, our the, my community is a 501c3, and I've got them listed. And I, Mike, I can't remember what Mike uh, sends, uh, says his, sends his to. Uh, you can get free eBooks. Uh, Prime members using Kindle or Kindle app are uh, have readily access to millions of books. I use that feature. Uh, I just got a new air fryer, and I've downloaded several. Kindle uh, air fryer cookbooks that go into my Kindle app on my desktop, and I'm able to access them, and most of them uh, were free. You can create and share custom uh, wish lists. I do, mate. If, if I go somewhere and, and look up something, and I really don't want to buy it now, but maybe sometime in the future, or I want to share that information either with Robin or with somebody else, uh, I put it in my wish list so I can find it again easily. And without having to purchase it to be able to go back and look at it. Uh, and you can share those links also with people. Here's what I want for Christmas. Uh, 12, you can only pay the months you're actually using Prime. Uh, it doesn't cost to end your Prime uh, owner to pay for Prime. Take a couple of months off from using it. Store up what you want to buy. And then when you're ready to buy them, Go ahead and renew your membership. It doesn't cost you any extra to rejoin. Uh, I would be careful. I am not sure how Prime charges you, but I would imagine that once you pay for a month, it's it, they don't give you a refund, so you're going to use it for that entire month. And if you have an Echo, you don't want to be turning it on and off because then your Echo is not going to work uh, when, it, when you don't have the Prime. Uh, save money with uh, Amazon warehouse deals. Uh, you're not going to be home. Set your preferred delivery day. You can tell them what day you want it delivered. You can improve your recommendations and teach the Amazon algorithm a lesson. Uh, you can restrict your binge watching habits. Uh, you can subscribe and save with frequent, uh, frequently ordered items. You can follow your favorite authors and get updates. Prime members get early access to some deals. And Prime uh, Windows users can get Alexa on their PC as well. So those are just 20 things from Amazon. Um, let's see. I didn't think I'd get this far. And I got about five minutes left. Let's, uh, instead of going to another item, let's go to any questions. See if we've got some questions either online or locally. Carol has one too. Okay. It's uh, through this mic on the. Um, yeah, I was just trying to see if you could hear me my cell phone. Can you hear Mike Huey? No, I could not. How about as, uh, as a participant, are you seeing my participant video? Yeah, it just came back up when you started talking, and I see it. Uh, and when I unshare the screen, you'll you'll see it. So uh, okay. you'll see it better. Uh, just give me a couple minutes because we're still recording. Yep. I hope.
Uh, uh, Ron Brown also mentioned that uh, uh, they do prorate your monthly fee. So if you do end your fee with Amazon, uh, it, it gets prorated. If you do it early, they uh, it, it, it's prorated. So that's good. And let's see, he loves his air fryer, and I do too. I'm using it a lot. Okay, uh, any other questions from, I don't see anything else online. Anything there from the audience there? Just curious, is Dick Vogel still with us? Uh, yes, he is. Yes, oh. I am. Hello, Dick, great. Good to see you, Stan. Yes, likewise. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recordings. This has been the Central Florida Computer Society for Sunday, March 8th, not 9th. And I'm sorry about that, but uh, today is the 8th. And I hope some people don't tune in tomorrow, because I think when I send it out, I send it out as the 9th. I may have sent it out as the 8th. And anyway, we're glad you joined us. I am going to uh, uh, stop the recording.